Okay, so I heard a massive attack. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now. I'm gonna go watch the news. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna um, put this on a tripod and go watch the news. Okay. Okay. Now I have it on the tripod. They believe it was an airplane. I'm going to go watch the news now. Yeah, she knew, she knew, she knew. Oh my god, you should, oh, I have a, a videotape of it. 
You should just see this thing. Wow. Oh my God. Are they saying, you know, I should get off the phone because Dave might be trying to call me because I left a message. I'll call you back. Now there's helicopters in the sky. I, I can't get them, but <clears throat> apparently CNN is saying that an air, uh, a, a twin-engine airplane crashed into it.
my god! Another airplane flew into the second tower, Kelly. I feel like we're under siege. I was watching CNN and there was another airplane and then there was an explosion. Oh my God, now the other one's on fire. I can see both buildings on fire. Because we're under siege. I think, I don't know what's going on. I don't know.
God. Now it's an airplane has hit, separate airplanes have hit both World Trade Center towers. Oh my God. Something and I don't know where to go or what to do. I go to the agency. From my apartment, I can see both of them just burning up. straight for it. It was, I mean, it was like, it was targeting it. Everybody's on cell phones. I can't get a hold of my own.
you know, I may have. I had my, I got a new career and I, I had it going ever since. It's definitely terrorism. It's, I mean, what else would it be? Two planes. The second plane, Kelly, you could see it. It turned to hit it. You should hear my neighborhood. I'm looking up. It's so weird because I'm looking down at the street below me. Okay. There's something going on. There are people running down my street. I'm not sure what's happening now, but...
security council is back to you. Uh, I'm going to refer you that way, and I apologize with you if I'm asking you to repeat something. I'm having a little uh, trouble hearing you. Okay. Uh, do you know exactly where the president was, when he was told? He was just arriving here in Sarasota at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He had taken an early morning job this morning in Sarasota and just arrived here with a presidential motorcade. Then the spectacular, horrific pictures began appearing on television sets here at the elementary school. The president received a telephone call from Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor. Then he received an update from his chief of staff, Andrew Carr, traveling with him. Then it was made clear to the press traveling with the president. He would make a statement. Shortly before that statement, he was actually sitting down with some children here at the elementary school, reading them a book. Reporters asked him if he knew about the situation in the Twin Towers. He nodded and said he would talk about it momentarily. In fact, he did. We just heard the president's statement. He kind of missed an apparent act of terrorism. Yes? Let me interrupt you here. Senator Ted Kennedy is uh, Senator Kennedy is speaking in Washington again. One of the planes was hijacked from Boston. Uh, the president is here, the senator now. Now that there is a fire on the mall in Washington, that part of the Capitol, 
that runs uh, the Washington Supreme Court down both to the White House and kind of a straight line going uh, up Washington, D.C., and we have reports of a fire there. Uh, this, what you're looking at now is Washington, at least if I can see the monitor in front of us oh, a little bit of where we are. Yeah. That looks to me like the old executive office building and then back and if you see the large plume of smoke. Here in New York, uh, the sirens everywhere, people out in the streets staring at this uh, grotesque scene of the World yeah. Trade Center buildings. It was in February of 93, if memory serves me correctly, that there was an attack, a terrorist yes, attack at the yeah. World Trade Center. I could hear it. Um, the 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 this this is when they blew up the, the uh, trade center that day. I was right. No, I heard out this. I mean, to be fair, it was all of my mind. On the World Trade Center, and then we have these two reports out of Washington, the fire at the Pentagon. Chris Plant is still uh, on the phone. I do believe. Um, and right. I think it came in a second. Greta Van Susteren is at National Airport in Washington. Greta, what are you hearing? Uh, I just got off work and I just the New York planes were stalled. I'm at National Airport on the parking lot. I heard a huge noise. I looked over in the direction of the Pentagon. with a huge plume of smoke coming from that area. I can't verify it's the Pentagon because they're rebuilding through the way. You see particles coming down the air. There's a white particle. I can't tell that that is. I heard a noise right before yes, I came because I, I'm not alone, there was nothing wrong because I left the house, uh, house uh, like a little bit after eight. Uh, so it happened when I was on the train. Yeah, I was on the train. Yeah, I was on the train. And then the other one happened at like 5 after the first door off of 30 years. That's why I went and got to the second street. There was no service coming in here. Recap as we pick up small pieces of information along the way. Associated Press is reporting on a plane it was a plane that crashed at the Pentagon, and the Pentagon is being evacuated. There is a large fire there, and that is the smoke you see in the shot that you're looking at now. Yes, very well. Whether that fire is in the door itself or outside, we have not yet confirmed. There is a fire on the mall in Washington. The cause, the cause of the fire on the mall in Washington, we cannot yet tell you. We can tell you that the White House has been evacuated, and we can tell you that two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. All of this began uh, just a little more than an hour ago. I hope Casey do time. not. Chris Plant, tell me I wonder you what's going on in this school with Daniel. I hope she's oh, not I should have school's school school canceled. Yes, I should have seen I hope she's not at work. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back
I want to make sure I get this right, guys, that in all, uh, at all airports so around the country, uh, yeah. uh, yes, I when you get home. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I'm going out to see if Stacy left Daniel in school or what's going on, and then I'm going to go home. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Ok
to John Hay on one second. We're also getting reports at the Capitol, the Treasury Building also being evacuated. John, was this evacuation from the White House, was it orderly? Did it seem panicky? How would you characterize it? It started off as orderly, much like you get when there are occasional bomb scares near the White House. But then, again, in the last 10 minutes or so, the people who came out the last several hundred I saw leaving the ground were told and ordered by the Secret Service to run. They were running through the gates. These are, of course, professionals in businesses. I'm also told that prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, that the Vice President and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they had stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke with administration officials shortly after the President delivered his statement. He said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption, this official said, was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connection with Osama bin Laden, the administration recently released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. targets. Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I... I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that. That's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the World oh, Trade Center. And you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now. And then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners. A second plane drove in too, and you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape, and there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least, and this is the first time I've seen that tape, come to the back side of the tower, I guess that would be the south side of the tower, and, come, and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side. Um, again, that was about a half hour after the first attack, which was at about 8.45. Look, if we, we want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed, apparently as part of whatever this operation has been, and uh, it, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion there at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor, uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, uh, coming past their window. The Pentagon had been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard. Uh, as an emergency team try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke building from the scene. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon, you know, the left front, which uh, makes the sort of point on the Oh my god. The second tower. 
not just in the taste and the smell. What is behind it, I, I cannot tell you. But just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. Again, this is going on now in two cities. We have a report that uh, there is a fire at the State Department as well, and that is being evacuated. So we've got fires at the Pentagon evacuated, the State Department evacuated, the White House evacuated on the basis of what the Secret Service describes as a, as a credible terrorist threat. We have two explosions, two planes hitting the World Trade Center here in New York, and what this second explosion was, it took place about a part of the south, that was the south tower that apparently collapsed. We don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it, or whether something else has happened there, we'll work on that. Our Washington bureau chief, Frank Cessna, is on the phone. Frank, what are you hearing? Karen, I just drove past the Pentagon, across the 14th Street Bridge, which is now totally tragic. We're beginning to hear uh, emergency sirens and rescue personnel uh, uh, standing out across Washington. There is a gigantic black billowing cloud of smoke has been rising over the Pentagon. We heard Jamie McIntyre a moment ago describe where that uh, was coming from. I can also tell you local radio and addition talking about evacuations as we've heard of the Pentagon. The White House is reporting that the Capitol buildings have been evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you, as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government. And as John King was explaining, Frank, Frank, I, Frank, I, say, right, I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center. We are getting reports that a part of the tower, the second tower, the one a, a bit further to the south of us, uh, has collapsed. We are checking on that. We are also told that the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. And what I can't tell you on that is whether there was something specific that happened there, whether there was an attack on that building yet, we're checking that out, or whether there was a warning, whether there was a threat of some sort, or whether that is simply precautionary. What we can tell you is that just in the last several minutes here, two or three minutes, a second or a third of a technically extraordinary event has happened here in Lower Manhattan. You can see this extraordinary plume of smoke uh, that is, or was, at least, the second tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, oh, perhaps three or four minutes ago, you could, from where we were standing, see that second building that is just a bit to the south of the first building, uh, but you can't see it anymore. It is covered with smoke, a large pool of smoke also coming still from the first tower where the first plane hit at about 8.45. We can, by the way, if we can uh, uh, cue the tape, we can show you that second attack, uh, or at least the second explosion in the Trade Center that occurred at about 9.15 Eastern Time. As you can imagine, Lord, there you can see to the right of the screen a plane coming in. We do have a report of a hijacked American Airlines plane. It comes into the south side, and then boom, you can see the fire coming out the front of the north side of the building, I guess that would be the northeast side of the building. And then just in the last several minutes, there has been a second explosion, or at least, perhaps not an explosion, perhaps part of the building simply collapsed. And that's what we saw, and that's what we're looking at, as the smoke now just covers lower Manhattan, almost as far to the end of Manhattan Island as you can get, is where the trade centers are. The, the, Trade of the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated and we continue to check on the circumstances there. The Pentagon, the State Department, and the White House have been evacuated in Washington as well. The President has said, We can show you now what happened just a few moments ago at the Trade Center. Watch the building to the left, to the, to the back of those two buildings. This is just a few minutes ago. We don't know if something happened, another explosion, or if the building was so weakened, it just collapsed. But uh, we have 
might be one of our producers on the phone, and I didn't get the name, so why don't, uh, why don't we just go ahead? You there? Yeah, this is Rose Marcy, Bond, New York. Rose, well, tell me what you know. Just a few minutes ago, we saw there's a portion of the building where the first plane struck that seemed to be buckling in sight of the homes just the top of the building was going to fall. Shortly after that, two people, and they hard to tell whether they were being pushed, and they, they physically approached themselves to sort of river side of the building, moving the west side of the building, and appeared to jump from the top floor, just under where you were seeing the smoke and fire. That is extraordinary. The South Tower, the World Trade Center, has collapsed. And again, tell me, how long ago was it that you saw this? It must have been about, about five minutes ago, and prior to that, you could see heads popping out of windows right beneath where that big gaping hole is, so there appeared to be people arrived right below where the crash point was. So we're trying to find some way out of there. And just as the thing started to buckle, we saw them plummeting from, from that top floor. Right, and, and of course this is stating the obvious, we apologize for that, but obviously people were uh, already at work here uh, at the Trade Center when this happened. Uh, we don't know how many people uh, have been hurt in all of this. We have no idea at this point as you look at an aerial shot coming from the, I guess that would be coming from the south uh, of the Trade Center or what is at least the Trade Center behind those uh, huge plumes of smoke. All airports across the country, every airport in the United States has been shut down as the FAA and the government tries to figure out exactly what has happened, what is at risk, what is not, who is behind it. Are there more explosions, more attacks yet to come? Uh, here in New York, trading on the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended, at least for now. All bridges and tunnels coming into the city have been shut down as police try and clear, uh, clear the way. We can tell you, as we were coming in uh, perhaps an hour ago, uh, there was a, a convoy, I can't think of a better word, a convoy of fire and police trucks racing down the west side highway this is in the middle of rush hour obviously every uh, available fire unit here in manhattan has been brought to the trade center outside the white house john king our senior white house correspondent john oh well, and they have pushed us even further back away from the white house now and there are more than a half dozen fire trucks some of the secret service now patrolling the perimeter of lafayette park which is directly across from the white house have automatic rifles drawn to keep people away from the park and they're policing back and forth. You can probably hear additional fire apparatus arriving on the scene. Uh, senior White House staffers who were evacuated, all they could tell us is that they were told that there was a credible threat on the White House as well and that they were told to evacuate the premises. What we do not know is uh, whether or not the Vice President and the National Security Team have stayed inside the White House Situation Room. We know that they were directing and monitoring operations from there as of just about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago. But the White House staff, the Executive Office Building staff, and all the office buildings around, including the Treasury Department, and some government and some non-government office buildings, people have been evacuated out into the street. And again, the Secret Service now putting up yellow police line tape, and some of them patrolling left here far with automatic rifles, which being quite extraordinary here across the White House. Uh, John, um, tell us if you can what the government's national security apparatus uh, will do right now. I mean, what, what do you guess is happening and where is it happening? Well, I don't know what to guess at all, but from the White House situation, we're a big president, we're a vice president, and we're at the war. Uh, they are at the full scale world war. The White House situation is where all information is accessible to all information from the United States military, from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, from the Federal Aviation Administration in this case. So the White House Situation Room is preparing just for situations like this, unfortunately, to be prepared in a time of crisis for the President to monitor incoming information and to direct any U.S. military or non-military emergency response to the White House Situation Room is a bomb shelter. So that, that, that part of the White House is a bomb shelter. Whether or not they have stayed in there is unclear. We know in the past that would be a routine. We just do not have a direct answer as yet because the, most of the staff, is, if not all of the staff, is evacuated from the premises. So I get you're just not being, you're not able to get any calls into the building right now, or at least not getting an answer at this point. The calls you get, calls you get into the building are not answered at this point. Uh, there are more fire apparatus showing up now as we speak. 
We saw most of the senior staff come out. We have not seen the national security staff to do the rest of that day, but I should tell there are other gates in the White House. We are on the north side. Oh, he's really brought out by uh, the sirens. Uh, Alan Dunn Frank uh, of our bureau here in New York joins us on the phone. Alan, where are you? I am. I'm going to get a Thank you. 
again, this is one of those situations that is extraordinarily chaotic. Uh, even, even in the best of planning, I think it's fair to say that it is chaotic and officials are trying to do many things at one time. We have on the phone a pilot who witnessed these uh, planes crashing in to the World Trade Center. Uh, sir, can you tell me your name? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, John, tell me what you saw. Uh, this morning we were at uh, Midtown Manhattan in a, a 31st floor of a building facing south. We saw a 767 flying low down the center of Manhattan Island heading towards downtown Manhattan. At about uh, maybe 20 blocks north of the World Trade Center, we saw the plane veer to the left and fly directly into the north side of the South Tower. So this was the second uh, plane that hit the tower, correct? This was the first plane. Got it. John, this was the 767. Got it. John, hang on. It's no like Capitol Hill. Uh, Kate, what can you tell us about the events there? Well, I'm a couple of blocks away from the Capitol right now. I can tell you that about a half hour ago, the Capitol building itself was evacuated. Uh, it was a little bit chaotic. Everyone was running out of the building. People ran a couple of blocks away. We are now just pushed back by security. We're within two blocks of the Capitol. I did see myself a plane about a half hour ago circling over the Capitol. Now, whether that may have been an Air Force, a U.S. plane, is, is unclear. It, uh, but that seemed to be the reason, according to security guards that I talked with, for the evacuation of the Capitol. They had seen something or heard something suspicious. They've evacuated the Capitol and the surrounding buildings, the office building, at least on the house side, which is where I'm standing, there are three house office buildings. Those have also been evacuated. Uh, we're seeing members of Congress are walking by us here on the sidewalk. Um, I can also, you go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, and if you said this, I apologize. Uh, I apologize to viewers too. Uh, was there, to your knowledge, an explosion at the Capitol? No, sir, there was not. Uh, I, I cannot, I can see the Capitol from here. Everything looks to be fine. There was, however, Aaron, a sound about five minutes ago that sounded like some sort of explosion. Everything is in close proximity here in Washington. It could be that that may have been something that happened at the Pentagon, but we're not very clear on that. But we didn't hear a sound. We heard something that sounded like a loud boom of about five minutes. Well, and you were there. How far away from the from the Capitol building itself? Uh, I'm standing on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is a main artery in Washington, D.C., and I'm about two blocks away from the Capitol. I think this is a spokesperson, by the way, for uh, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Hazard, Senator Hazard, tells me that uh, Mr. Hazard and other leaders have been evacuated into what he calls a secure location. Not clear where exactly they are, but they just been somewhere secure. And because we can't see it at this point, just give me a sense of what it looks like there. Are there many, many people on the street? Uh, yeah, the sidewalks, people are calm. I think most people don't really know what's going on. Most people haven't been watching the news. Uh, but the sidewalks are pretty much in a Normally at this time of the morning, there wouldn't be that many people out here. And as I say, I've been passed by numerous uh, members of Congress and senators and staff, you know, who I know well who have been coming past me asking me what's going on. Okay, why don't you just uh, hang around here and continue to report uh, that. Let me just again, for those viewers who are joining us at about uh, 20 minutes so past 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, let me just briefly recap. Attacks on two American cities, New York and Capitol in Washington. They began at about 8.45 Eastern Time when a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. That building, that was the building hit first. And then about half an hour later, a second plane, and I'm not sure if we have the tape available, but we do, we'll show it to you. You can see the second plane coming in from the right side of the screen, going into the tower itself. This is an extraordinary and troubling piece of tape. The Justice Department is now being evacuated. The second attack on the Trade Center occurred about half an hour or so after the first one. We have a report, CNN has been told, that an American Airlines 767 jet was hijacked out of Boston today. We don't know which of those two planes uh, hit the tower the second time. In the last 10 minutes or so, the South Tower, or at least a portion of the South Tower, has collapsed. It, uh, CNN's David Ensor joins us from Washington. David, where in the capital are you now? 
Well, Aaron, I'm, uh, I'm in our bureau, but I have on the telephone with me a Barbara, who is the wife of a friend of mine and who is an eyewitness to exactly what happened uh, at the Pentagon. Barbara, uh, can you hear me all right? Can yes, you? I can hear you. Well, what exactly did you see? Uh, let's look at the Pentagon now as, as you describe uh, what exactly happened at the Pentagon this morning. As we were driving into town on Grand 95, there was an exit. We were trying to get on the exit to the Memorial Bridge. Off to the left hand side of the commercial plane, we came in and we were coming too fast and too low. And the next thing we saw was we go down the road, the side of the road, and we just saw the fire that came up after that. How large was the explosion? Uh, it was large. Was there a sound as well? Um, we thought I can't, can't be up, I can the windows right in the vehicle. Was it clear to you what happened? Yeah. Definitely. So you believe it was a commercial airliner that was uh, hitting the Pentagon? Yes, and I'm not sure exactly where the Pentagon where it was in relationship to where the plane went down. You know, but they are relatively close to one another. Whether it hit any part of that Pentagon, I'm not sure. How low well was the plane? When it was coming down? Yeah. It, it, it was coming down on a uh, less than a 45 degree angle and coming down towards the side of the... Um, 395. And when I came down, I just missed the 395 and went down below it, and then you saw the fire smoke on it. Were you able to see what kind of plane or what, what airline it belonged to? No, I did not see what kind of an airline. I just assumed because it was, we were so close to the airport, it was coming into land. But it seemed off the low to you. Yes, and fast. How big was the fireball? Um, I've been what do you think was happening? Um, I know that that hit the ground and it exploded. Were you frightened yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely got the car and we all got that point. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you talking to us. Aaron, back to you. David, thank you. CNN's David Insort in Washington. CNN Brian Palmer joins us on the phone from here in Manhattan. Brian, why don't you begin by telling me where you are? We are in front of the criminal courthouse after being pushed north from the. We watched the most encounters of uh, the World Trade Center disappear from the skyline. It basically melted into itself in a pool of great smoke. A crowd of thousands of people dashed up from a phone on emergency services personnel. Um, both, as we know now, we're watching the proof of smoke uh, and debris is sort of washed, uh, washed across the. Uh, Lauren and Helen, if you were lining up at the stage home behind me, trying to find out uh, where they're going to stay. Well, I think it's a great to go to Randy. Randy, just look out there and tell me what you think. And when you see, now it appears that he's part of one of the landmark buildings in this city, one of the most recognizable buildings in the country, is gone. It is the kind of moment you hope will never come. Uh, when you have been in government, when you care as much about this city and this country as a mayor like Rudy Giuliani does, it's a moment you pray will never come, and you pray for the families of anyone uh, affected by this tragedy. Uh, but as a city, you know, we come together and our emergency services provide every support they can in the face of such a senseless tragedy. It's a, it is an unbelievable scene. It's incredible. We look down and we stand here at some point every day looking out at the city this time of year. It's extraordinarily pretty and we see those two buildings high above Lower Manhattan and we look out there today and we see this baby hole in one of them. There's plumes of smoke that continue to pour from the scene and you, and you know that there's nothing behind. There's nothing power or these parts that are gone. We join now uh, one of our affiliates, WNYW, and their coverage here in New York.
we now believe there was no explosion at the Capitol. There were Air travel routed to Canada has been international flights going into into the United States or into Canada, guys. Into the United States. International flights headed for the United States. Our team sent to Canada now to airports there as all air traffic in the United States has come to a halt. The FAA has shut down every airport in the country and to our knowledge that we're uh, this is to the best of our memory that has never happened before. We're starting to get some uh, pictures of the scene uh, from the ground here in Manhattan. Uh, again, this all started about almost an hour and a half ago, I guess, a little more than that. Uh, this is a live picture of the scene now. Uh, we have crews on the ground and they've been trying to get tape back so we can show you the situation on the ground. As you can imagine, literally, uh, thousands of police, fire, rescue officials uh, have converged on the scene. Uh, there are, and we don't know how many, injured to be tended to, to be taken to hospitals. And we continue to check hospitals to find out uh, how many, the extent of injuries. We do not yet know how many fatalities. There is the scene. This is tape now from uh, WABC here in New York. Uh, their crew shot this picture as you see uh, fire trucks and firefighters, rescue personnel at the Trade Center about 30 blocks from where we are right now. And you can see these huge columns of smoke uh, coming off of the front tower and then a bit from the back. As you see, again, the crews working their way towards the, towards the tower themselves. It was 1993. Uh, that I suspect many of these same firefighters converged on these very same towers uh, after the bombing in the in the garage level. Uh, help me with this, but I'm pretty sure it was in the garage when a right, when a rider truck uh, came in and blew up in the garage. I'm not sure it was a rider truck, but a truck came in and uh, blew up in the garage, and that was in 1993. <laughs> Now 